In this video, we will be explaining Cataclysm PvP at four different levels, starting with the most important lesson every beginner needs to understand, to how the game is played at the highest level and everything in between. We will start with one basic idea. In Cataclysm, healers just kinda suck. No, not the players themselves, just healing in general. It doesn't even matter if you play the most broken healer in the game, you're going to feel the pain no matter what, but it doesn't matter if you play healer or DPS because each level will apply to you. In fact, throughout this video, we will be teaching you the simple plays that can actually win you games in Cataclysm PvP, because that's exactly what we do at skillcap.com. We teach you step by step how to master your spec in the most streamlined learning experience ever for WoW PvP. We've even added a brand new course to our website that teaches you how to counter every class in Cataclysm. And if all of this wasn't enough, Skillcap members now have access to a complete UI profile available right now on our website. So if you want to get the rating you really deserve, be sure to use the exclusive discount code directly below this video and take advantage of our rating gain guarantee. Alright, let's start with the most fundamental level of Cataclysm PvP, controlling tempo. If you've been playing any of the modern expansions for the past few years, most of your games follow the same pattern. Pressure goes up and down the entire game. One team does a go, and the other team blocks, rinse, and repeat. Sometimes it doesn't even matter what happens in the opener, because even if someone drops low, there's always a few buttons on the team that can save them, and games are either won or lost based on a few cooldown exchanges over a long period of time. Some players will refer to this as scripted PvP, since games follow a pretty basic pattern from start to finish. In Cataclysm, there aren't nearly as many tools to instantly top someone's HP. So if someone drops low, it's going to take a really long time to get them topped, and what happens in the first few seconds of every game can have a massive impact later on. Watch this opener here, where Seedu will get swapped to, causing him to immediately use Pain Suppression. The RMP will then swap to Vanguards, and immediately force Trinket and even Bubble. Now, if this were retail, the RMP would be laughing in Discord like a bunch of hyenas. But then, look who actually wins this game. Despite popping almost every major cooldown in the first 10 seconds of the game, Sidu's team comes out on top because they use their cooldowns to dictate tempo. In fact, you will see Sidu do this a lot, especially against these teams with a lot of CC. Here, he will dome, trinket, and then PS within a few seconds of the game actually starting, even after deathing Scattershot, because Sidu knows how important it is to not fall behind. You can't be greedy early on. And once again, the opener of every game is really important, and not just for comps like RMP. Pressure will snowball very quickly in Cataclysm, making it harder and harder to recover. This isn't retail, where healers have swifty one-shot healing buttons. This is Cataclysm, where a healer's greatest enemy is a goddamn monkey. Instead of playing on script, you need to think more about playing for tempo, trying to snowball your momentum from start to finish. Alright, so now we are at level 1. The first thing you need to understand when playing Kata is that healers suck, and because of this, you need to control tempo. Don't be greedy. So now we're going to shift a bit more to the DPS side, because now we're going to fine tune how we actually control tempo throughout a game, which starts with one key rule, get ready to peel. Peeling might be a lost art in World of Warcraft. We're not saying it's entirely irrelevant in modern expansions, because it definitely isn't. But in the days of old, peeling was way more effective and even required to not instantly lose. Remember that healers suck. There's not going to be 10 different safety nets to stay alive, and damage needs to be slowed down in other ways. The iconic Wreckful Control video demonstrates this perfectly. Since momentum is so important, especially in the early game, you need to do everything you can to prevent the enemy team from gaining it, which means adopting a support-based mindset. Over 10 years later, this concept still carries over to the modern game, where peeling is just one way to play around the fact that recovery is so limited. You need to help out your team, and especially your healer, with peels. Imagine your healer dying to a solo DPS in retail. You would say, what are you doing, bro? Just press a button. But in Cataclysm, there are some comps that can just run at healers, and some DPS, like Unholy DKs, can even take down a healer themselves. If you aren't peeling for your healer, they are going to die, and if they don't, then they're probably going to be dead on the floor, or at the very least, burn every single defensive just to stay alive for 15 seconds. If you're lucky enough to play a caster with spammable CC like Fear or Polymorph, then you have enormous power when it comes to dictating tempo, and you should always be willing to take the extra step of covering your CC with trash debuffs to prevent immediate dispels. But you don't even need an 8 second polymorph into DB to be an effective peeler. Even something as simple as a charge stun into hamstring can be an effective peel, because Cataclysm doesn't have the mobility creep we're used to in the modern day, so giving your partner a few seconds of breathing room can be a lifesaver. Now we're at the end of level 2, 
We know that healers kind of suck, which means our goal is to control tempo, and one way of doing this is to peel often. But obviously, you can't win arena by peeling all game, and now we need to think about controlling tempo in the other direction. Here's a quick question. What is scarier than a Swifty one-shot macro? Trick question, nothing is scarier than a Swifty one-shot macro, especially from Swifty himself. But seriously, by now you already know that burst damage is always better if you can toss in some lockdown. If you're a retail player, this is usually done through micro CC. After all, who needs long CC chains to win? Now, if you thought micro CC was a retail only problem, think again because Kata is full of it. Impact stuns, DB, monkey blind, blanket CS, the list goes on. All of these things are great for piling on pressure, peeling, you name it. But it's important to remember that long duration CCs like Polymorph or Fear aren't nerfed like they are in retail. Blind Sap is a real win condition, especially when two smoke bombs are thrown into the mix. Because recovery tools are limited, healers being taken out of the game for 8 seconds or longer puts them massively behind in a meta game based around tempo. The best warlocks like Chanimal don't just stop after landing one fear on the enemy healer. No, he pushes for the second and third DR on the enemy healer to take them out of the game for as long as possible, adding to the snowball of pressure. And you know what else Chanimal is so good at? Fishing for moments to AoE fear. In retail, AoE fears are definitely strong, but lack the impact to completely swing games in the other direction. In Kata, landing AoE CC or cross CC is like an entire power-up, enabling one team to completely change the course of a game. Dragon's Breath, Psychic Scream, and Howl of Terror all have much shorter cooldowns than their retail versions, and even stick for longer thanks to higher damage thresholds. So if you have these tools on your team, great. But because AoE CC is so punishing, you also need to think of it from the reverse perspective and actively avoid it. You can't tank multiple AoE fears or DBs in a row because it means sacrificing so much tempo in the process. Hell, you can't even let your healer take multiple CC chains in a row. The standard Hunter CC chain is over 20 seconds long. Your healer can't take more than one of those in a game. If you can eat a freezing trap for your healer, it's a really big deal. Now we're at the end of level 3, on top of peeling often, we also need to really focus on making the most out of CC chains on the enemy healer, while making a massive effort to prevent our healer from taking CC. Now we've reached level 4, where we can truly elevate our gameplay to dictate tempo. If you were wondering why there are some players who are just so good at these classic expansions, the reality is it's the small plays that truly make a difference in Cataclysm. When you play retail, what typically determines the outcome of a game comes down to two things. One, how much damage you can do, and two, how efficiently you can trade CDs. Now, these things definitely matter in Cataclysm 2, but what matters just as much are the smaller micro decisions. Because your spellbook isn't full of these huge get out of jail free cards, you need to find smaller ways to push advantages, like eating a trap for your healer. Again, if you can block just one setup, it means stalling the momentum from the enemy team, which is exactly what you want. Cataclysm games are decided by these smaller micro interactions, and sometimes they are plays you are already used to making on retail, like deathing a major CC like Blind or Polymorph. Other times these micro interactions don't even exist in retail, like keeping fairy fire on enemy rogues, or dispelling a feral druid's predatory strikes to deny an instant cyclone, or even using turn evil to instantly CC a DK's gargoyle. These are all game winning plays because they help manage momentum. There's a reason why old PvP videos are full of these small micro interactions, because the smaller plays add up to something much larger when done consistently. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, be sure to check out Skillcap. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating while actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.